of Cobra La. Detach and defend to the death. 14 psychotic and ruthless G.I. Joe villains, backstories explained in detail. All of us who grew up through the 80s and early 90s have fond memories of the G.I. Joe franchise. It was the fascinating cartoon story that managed to sell wartime heroics and toys to an entire generation of kids. The history dates back to the 70s when the Hasbro toy line was staring at huge losses as a result of public opinion against the war in Vietnam. The rising oil prices and negative sentiments meant that producing the 12-inch action figures was no longer viable. In the meantime, they watched Star Wars toys selling like hotcakes, feeding off the emotional attachment to the film series and the characters. This is when the idea first occurred to the toy makers to give the Joes a storyline that would differentiate the bad guys from the good ones. The plot would be rather simple, with the heroes fighting the villainous Cobra forces, saving the world from all forms of evil. Veteran TV writer Ron Friedman was asked to create a series, a decision which changed the toy industry forever. Besides improving business, the series also bolstered the image of the U.S. military, and the positive messages of sacrifice for the greater good and heroism were well received. So we will look into some of the dreaded villains from the franchise who proved to be worthy opponents for the heroes. Before we go into our list, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click from you, but it means a lot to us. Thank you. Let's begin. Things go boom by 9 a.m. And most people do all day. Firefly. Firefly. This guy worked as the master saboteur for Cobra Organization, a dreaded mercenary whose real name was unknown even to his commander. Nobody knows his true appearance, and his secrecy is one of his biggest assets. He has all the qualities of a perfect mercenary. He strikes targets suddenly, uses stealth to his advantage, and receives his payments into a secret Swiss bank account. He is a trained ninja with impressive fighting skills, a shadow assassin who can strike without raising the faintest alarm. Firefly specializes in working with all kinds of explosives and detonators, and he always knows the best place to plant the devices, ensuring maximum damage. He always charges his fee in advance, and there is no guarantee of success or of a refund if he fails. Blackout, who joined the Cobra organization after his brother was selected for G.I. Joe forces and he wasn't, and Munisha, a female mercenary, often accompany Firefly. Together, they are referred to as HISS, which stands for Hierarchy of Infiltration, Stealth, and Sabotage. Firefly also went undercover in the Phoenix Guard, receiving training in his fabricated identity. <laughs> While he can be an unpleasant character, his effectiveness cannot be denied. The comics featured an interesting backstory for this character, in which Firefly's father was indebted to the Koga Ninja Clan. Firefly was taken in by the clan after his father died and trained to become a master assassin. He was a crucial character in the franchise, and there have been 11 action figures of him, mostly dressed in BDU fatigues and a ski mask. If you must have villains, they ought to be as badass as Firefly. Yes, but this is prettier, isn't it? Large Bill? Tomax and Zamot. These two were also known as the Crimson Twins or the Crimson Guard Commanders. The Crimson Guard is one of the elite forces within the Cobra organization, and Tomax and Zamot Paoli are the co-leaders of this force. <laughs> The brothers hail from Corsica, which is evident from their accent, and initially they were part of the Corsican Mafia organization called Union Corse. After this, they were involved with the French Foreign Legion's first rep in Algeria, and also served as mercenaries in South America and Africa. Later, they switched careers and became bankers in Switzerland. Tomax and Zamut were disappointed with the world of corporate finance, and they felt that their skills were better suited to international terrorism. They joined the Cobra organization and became voluble members of the team, adept as they were in espionage, infiltration, sabotage, and the spreading of their evil propaganda. Their knowledge of corporate finances came in handy as they managed the business affairs of Cobra when not directly engaged in acts of terrorism. The twins are known for their brains, and they cleverly masked any traces of their connection to the Cobra organization. No! Oh! 
The pair may be twins and they definitely look alike, but there is one difference that will help you identify them. Zamat's hair is parted on the left side while Tomax's hair is to the right. There's also a distinguishable scar on Zamot's right cheek. The twins are physically bonded in some way, and this helps them communicate with each other non-verbally. <laughs> However, this is also a hindrance for them because they feel each other's pain, too. The action figures were pretty unique, equipped with a zip line and a sky hook and even laser pistols. The brothers troubled the G.I. Joe forces with their smart moves and cunning tactics time and time again. Destro this villain's full name sounds like some medieval lord. James McCullen Destro the 24th has proved on many occasions to be a key component in the sinister plans of the Cobra forces. He hails from the Scottish Highlands, where he is laird of Castle Destro. He maintains a private army called Iron Grenadiers, but is also the founder of Mars Industries, the company which manufactures and supplies weapons to the Cobra organization. In fact, Destro belongs to a clan that designed weapons and traded them for hundreds of years. Although this organization is one of the biggest multinational corporations to dabble in such serious crime, Destro somehow manages to remain the faceless power behind it all. Is no more. Now, you are Destro. Destro loves to indulge in a lavish lifestyle, comparable to that of oil tycoons. He owns apartments and offices in almost all the major cities of the world, and his fierce cutthroat attitude makes him a shrewd businessman. Destro profits from war, and thus warmongering is his passion. The wealth of Mars continues to grow as Destro's hired mercenaries create trouble across the globe. Outweighed by recent developments. The Psy Amplifier works perfect. Once he has successfully created a conflict, Destro provides his high-tech weapons to whichever side can pay more. In fact, at times, he even sells his weapons to both sides. One of Destro's ancestors was punished and made to wear a steel mask, and since then, his clan has made it a symbol of their pride. Although he serves the Cobra forces, he doesn't like the Cobra commander and maintains the alliance simply for convenience. He actually admires the G.I. Joe team, although their peacekeeping attitude doesn't resonate with his warmongering nature. In your historic then stand back while the men do the work. However, there have been instances where he has helped the G.I. Joe team, when it has benefited his business to do so. As surprising as it may seem for such a cunning businessman, Destro actually thinks of himself as an honorable man, following his own moral code. Whoever you are. Cobra Law Cobra Law is not one person, but an entire ancient civilization that once ruled the world. Later, the group retreated into a hideout in the cave systems of the Himalayan mountains. Galobulus is the present-day leader of the organization, and his clan has perfected the art of immortality, so he is able to live forever. All his body parts have been replaced over time, and only his central nervous system and his brain have remained intact. As a civilization, Cobra Law seek to rule the Earth once again as a dominant species. They despise human life, and they simply want to regain their past glory. The animated shows have offered various origin stories for Cobra Law. According to the Sunbow animated series, the Cobra Law were once forced to retreat into the Himalayan caves due to the onset of the Ice Age. To preserve our ways and await an opportunity to reclaim the Earth. They tried to wait it out, waiting for an opportunity to retake the Earth. Golobulus selected a young man to go out amidst the humans in disguise and raise an army that would help them conquer the planet. This nobleman later became the Cobra Commander, but his numerous attempts to seize power failed because of the protective forces of the Earth. Stain my hands with your blood! The Cobra Law Toys came in a three-pack combo containing Galobulus, Nemesis Enforcer, and a Royal Guard. This wasn't the most popular set, but the Cobra Law story arc is crucial in order to support the rest of the narrative in the series. Despite this, Cobra Law never featured in the G.I. Joe A Real American Hero Marvel series as the writer was not too fond of the bizarre plotline. After some persuasion by Hasbro, he did concede a little, including some of the characters he disliked, though the full story of Cobra Law was too much for him. Nemesis Enforcer 
In the series A Real American Hero, Nemesis Enforcer is shown to be one of the Cobra Law characters. It is believed that Galobulus raised Nemesis Enforcer from a pile of dead stuff, and his goal was nothing but emptiness. Before the Ice Age, he tirelessly carried out the wishes of his master, and some of his fleeting glimpses gave rise to the legends of vampires and other such creatures. Nemesis Enforcer, dispose of them. In some ways, Nemesis Enforcer serves as a bodyguard to Globulus, tasked with the protection of his creator. In the animated movie spin-off, we saw this character as the elite guard who doesn't speak, instead responding in grunts and growls. The Nemesis Enforcer is shown as a humanoid with large wings that help him fly through the skies. The animated movie showed a sorry end to his character after his wing was broken by Sergeant Slaughter and he was thrown into a spiked walled pit. In the initial toy line, the Nemesis Enforcer figure came with accessories like a bright green tentacle backpack and a gray wing backpack. He was feared as the dark force that could strike in silence, and various versions of G.I. Joe have shown him engaged in some intense fights. Storm Shadow Storm Shadow is easily one of the most popular characters in the G.I. Joe series, the ninja bodyguard for the Cobra Commander. He's a unique character for another reason, and that is his shifting allegiances. He has been one conflicted character caught up between the Cobra forces and the G.I. Joe troops. His relationship with Snake Eyes has also been a talking point, as they have grown from the best of friends who would die for each other to bitter enemies. Storm Shadow comes from a family of assassins, and he was initially in the U.S. Army Special Ops group alongside Snake Eyes. He trained as a ninja and had an 8th degree black belt in various forms of martial arts. His agility and endurance qualities are second to none, and he moves at a breathtaking speed. It is believed that while he trained with Snake Eyes, the Master was more impressed with his friend than with Storm Shadow, causing him to be jealous. When the Master was murdered, Snake Eyes thought that Storm Shadow was behind the killing, even though he wasn't. Over the course of various story arcs surrounding him, Storm Shadow has been seen working for Mars Industries, and he holds a grudge against Snake Eyes for the history that they share. He is absolutely ruthless, never shying away from killing innocent people when necessary. However, even as a dreaded villain, Storm Shadow abided by certain principles. For instance, he never killed women and he believed in his duties. He was a fierce opponent for the G.I. Joe forces, and only Snake Eyes could match up to his vicious fighting style. The character has had many different appearances, but the one featuring a white coat, white pants, and a white face mask is one that has stayed with us. This was the look chosen for the character's figure in the first toy line released. Getting closer. Baroness. Baroness is one of the rare female villains in the G.I. Joe series, serving as an intelligence officer for the Cobra forces. She is a lieutenant in the force, reporting to the Cobra commander. Baroness was a femme fatale, whose beauty would be mesmerizing and misleading for the opponents. Her flowing black hair, alluring leather outfit, and black-rimmed glasses made her a beautiful lady, but she was equally vicious and cunning. Baroness is the spoiled daughter of European aristocrats, and she started her career when radicalized as a student through her involvement with fringe groups. She made it to the big leagues of international terrorism from there and is a spy and saboteur of the highest order. She leads the intelligence operations of her organization, and her expertise in psychological warfare and biochemical weaponry are second to none. She has extensive knowledge of firearms and could even pilot helicopters and planes. She has been shown as loyal to Destro, and there were a great many hints of a relationship between the two. In fact, she is the only one who actually knows Destro's true identity. She survived some serious burn injuries during a night operation and required extensive plastic surgery in the aftermath. Baroness was an intriguing character, balancing cynicism with romantic tendencies and exhibiting calculating but also naive behavior. This self-contradictory nature in her character did not stop her from troubling the G.I. Joe forces every now and then with her moves. Baroness was one of the first female characters that made it to production as a toy, which came in the character's trademark black leather outfit. For I am Serpentor, and I must rule this! I come Serpentor 
Serpentor was one of the most powerful villains in the series, a unique creature constructed by Destro and Dr. Mindbender. The pair scouted the tombs of some of the greatest leaders in human history and used their DNA traces to create Serpentor. The villain had the combined qualities of such greats, including the genius of Napoleon, the vicious nature of Julius Caesar, the cunning brain of Attila the Hun, and the daring attitude of Hannibal. Your brother fell before my wrath, and so shall you! They also added in the aggressive attacking nature of Sergeant Slaughter, creating the versatile Serpentor, who was powerful enough to overthrow the Cobra Commander and take leadership of the group for himself. Basically, Destro and Dr. Mindbender were frustrated with the numerous failures of the Cobra Commander and wanted to create a superior leader. We saw a lot of this invincible antagonist in the second season of the original animated series. Once he was created, he challenged the Cobra Commander and was way more effective as a leader. However, the humanity in him was dead. He was more of a monster with some crazy sociopathic views. You, young one, you nearly thwarted my destiny! He viewed everything and everyone in this world as his inferior, and he often had some very mean things to say to his henchmen. Even his creators were not spared his harsh words. The worst part about Serpentor as a leader was that he viewed his subordinates as dispensable in the fight against G.I. Joe forces, and his arrogance was pretty irritating. Eventually, the Cobra Commander did regain control of his forces and Serpentor was transformed into an iguana. But we must point out that there are very different stories featuring this character in other versions of G.I. Joe. When the first action figure for Serpentor was released, it came with an air chariot with reinforced battle shield, attack guns, and a hover engine. It was quite a popular toy, and this character was regarded as one of the toughest antagonists that G.I. Joe ever had to deal with. You shall soon see what develops. Zartan Zartan and his siblings were the leaders of the militarized biker gang the Dreadnoughts, which worked for the Cobra organization whenever the need arose. Zartan reported directly to the Cobra commander. Tornado before the final lightning strike. A brilliant plan, leader. His special skill was his ability to blend into the background using his expertise in makeup and disguise. He could change his skin color at will, and this made camouflage pretty simple for him. His background is shrouded in mystery, but it is believed that he received received some military training at some European military academy. He was an expert in mystical martial arts, and his deception techniques were brilliant. He was a ventriloquist and someone who could speak over 20 languages in various dialects. And he and his biker gang could also use holographic technology to disguise themselves. And you've chosen our next target for destruction. Yeah. Zartan was particularly skilled at tasks involving infiltration and espionage. His siblings, Zarana and Xandar, also worked for Cobra, and Zarana was a top-ranking agent of the Notorious organization. Zartan and the Dreadnoughts were important villains in the Marvel comic series, and they also featured in the 1985 TV series. When the original toy line was released, Zartan's file card said that he suffered from schizophrenia and multiple personality disorder. Hasbro later removed this file card after there were complaints from a mental health organization. Even without the psychopath angle to his character, Zartan was an intriguing addition to the series, a villain to be feared and respected. You will call me Commander. Cobra Commander the mastermind of every evil plan hatched against the Joes, the Cobra Commander, as his name suggests, leads the Cobra organization. He is a fanatical leader who is maniacal about his supremacy, demanding absolute loyalty from his henchmen and wishing to take control of the world governments. I hope your contraption is worth it! That is not your concern! Cobra Commander's name is synonymous with anarchy, chaos, and uprising that disrupt peace and order. It is speculated that he single-handedly organized the uprisings in the Middle East and Southeast Asia just for the sake of his mission. So what is his modus operandi? Cobra Commander is known to kidnap military leaders, businessmen, and scientists and force them to reveal their top secrets in order to give him an advantage. He does not shy away from extreme measures to complete his tasks, and time and again he has been attacked by the Joes. However, he has a strong personality and keeps coming back even after getting bruised and battered. 
Stop that, Castro! I see you both clearly and I am stuck! The assassination attempts do not disturb him, and no matter how bad the situation, he keeps coming up with new plans. The Cobra Commander is an expert in manipulating people, and his rhetoric can influence even the smartest minds. He has a complex personality, often charismatic and psychopathic at the same time. One of the things that we liked about this character is that he never pretended to serve a greater cause like many other ruthless dictators. He simply wanted to take control of the world order and cause large-scale destruction using his weapons of terrorism and economic slavery to do so. His cool appearance was utilized by the toy company, who have been able to create some amazing action figures over the years. I don't understand! Do you understand this, Mind Bungler? Dr. Mindbender what is an evil organization without the genius scientist on board to create some brilliant inventions? Dr. Mindbender is precisely that character, safeguarding the Cobra organization through his devices. There have been multiple incarnations of his character, ranging from a comical villain to a deadly fascist leader. However, we know him largely as a helping hand for the Cobra Commander and Destro. Nothing from your previous catastrophe? Do you seriously? Despite his evil affiliations, Dr. Mindbender did not start off as a bad guy. He was a peace-loving orthodontist who used to mind his own business. He even designed a machine that would help people suffering from dental pain, which used some kind of electric brainwave stimulation to cause relief. He then tested the machine on himself, and it went haywire, leaving a terrible impact on his brain. The brain damage made him opt for a life of evil, but he did retain his scientific brilliance despite the injury. Dr. Mindbender then joined the Cobra forces and became a master of interrogation and mind control. Oh, mine! Arise, most powerful one! Arise! He was also skilled in genetics and cloning, demonstrated when he helped create Serpentor. The action figure was bare-chested with purple pants and was sold with leathery metal-studded suspenders. Claim what is rightfully ours! Destroy and... Major Blood Major Blood became a mercenary, but initially he was part of the security forces. He was trained in the Australian Special Air Service and even served in Southeast Asia. He also saw some action in Algeria before he finally became a mercenary. Major Blood was a military advisor in some of the hostile nations, and he indulged in numerous terrorist acts across various countries. He played a key role in disrupting peaceful governments across Europe and is on the most wanted list on three continents. I want him alive, you fool! Major Blood was a vicious villain known for various war crimes he had committed across the world. His greatest asset is his sharp tactical mind, but he is skilled with the use of all kinds of weapons. Major is a sharpshooter who can use long-range sniper rifles effectively, though he also knows his way around plastic explosives. His affiliation with the Cobra Group are well known, but he is also linked with the supersonic fighters and Python Patrol groups too. The Marvel comic book series has an interesting storyline surrounding this character, in which he is hired by the Cobra Commander to kill Destro. The Cobra Commander saw Destro as a threat to his authority and wanted Major Blood to get rid of any competition. However, his attempt to do so was foiled by the Baroness, who was in love with Destro. The cold-hearted mercenary was a threat to everyone, and his antics made for some interesting chapters in the series. It'll be all the more sweet when I turn you all into talk show. Cesspool. Sometimes the very worst of supervillains have very interesting origin stories. Cesspool is one such antagonist in the G.I. Joe series who took up evil only after a terrible tragedy. His original name was Vincent Aleva, and he was the CEO of a company that dealt in oil refineries and chemical plants. When the environmentalists kept pressuring the company and questioning their acts, he personally took them on a tour of the facilities to prove the company's innocence. However, he accidentally fell into a vat of chemical sludge, scarring his face terribly. He recovered but developed a strong hatred for the environment and a bitterness towards humanity. Initially, the idea was that Cesspool would fight the eco-warriors of G.I. Joe. He joined the Cobra organization and helped them run their legitimate businesses. His work for the Cobra group saw him collaborate with Zorana on Cobra Island. When they were captured and used to seek ransom from the Cobra commander, he refused, saying that they were worthless to their leader. This was a nice way for the series to shed some light on the evils of pollution and the need for recycling and conservation. 
All so we can charge them off our loaf of bread. <laughs> the toy line was released in the Eco Warriors subset, and Cesspool looked pretty cool in his blue green outfit, with gold armor on the shoulders and a ghastly scar across his face. He even came with a helmet as an accessory, and the kids loved this toy even though he was a villainous character. Attack? Who dares attack me, the Headman? Headman. You know a villain is bad when both the baddies and the heroes are after them. The Headman is one such character in the G.I. Joe series, and we have seen both the G.I. Joe forces and the Cobra organization teaming up to end his menace. He was a drug kingpin who led the Headhunters against the Drug Enforcement Force. He made a fortune from the drug trade and initially had ties to the Cobra organization, who benefited from all the money he made. Soon, however, he became too much for them to handle. Headman's drug peddling forces often came into conflict with the Joes, and violent battles ensued. He even brought drugs into a Cobra-controlled town and antagonized both parties. Please, the old stuff isn't enough anymore. We remember the famous two-part episode where the two enemy teams come together simply to stop Headman. His headquarters were invaded and he barely managed to escape with his hostages. When the groups cornered him finally, he tried to expose them to his drugs. All efforts failed and eventually he succumbed to drug poisoning himself. Headman got blown up and the whole storyline became a strong statement against the evils of drug abuse. As a toy, he was almost an educational warning and parents would willingly buy his figure for their kids. This is all the time we had for today's episode. We hope you guys liked it. It would be awesome if you guys can take some time to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to tell us which topic you want us to cover in the comment section. Have a fantastic day ahead and stay safe. Nemesis Enforcer, take him away.